Yo, what's up, guys? A lot of people struggle playing against Kashtira with Pendulum. So Under three slaps. Please knock his ass out. Here we go. Oh, shit. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys very specifically how to destroy Kashtira, no matter what Pendulum deck you're playing, but preferably in Demian. The entire video is essentially just going to be a background of duels and deck profile and all that. I'm going to explain at least 20 tips on how to destroy Kashtira. Kashtira is a free win, not the other way around. Stay tuned to the end of the video. Let's go. Yo, what's up, everyone? It's your boy. Today's video, I'm going to teach you guys how to beat Kashtira with Pendulum. Everyone thinks that Kashtira is an amazing matchup against Pendulum because your zones get locked. I'm going to show you guys the typical board here of Kashtira. I'm going to explain it very specifically. Now, whether it's starting with Ogre, whether it's starting with Unicorn or Fenrir, doesn't matter which Kashtira they start with. The board looks the same. Whether they have Ogre and an Extender, you know, some people play this Extender, some people play the Ascendant of Thunder Extender, whatever. They're all the same. The majority of the boards, unless they open absurd, is literally this. This is the majority. Now, this is only turn one. And if it gets down to turn three or the following turn, you don't destroy them or in simplified game states, they could very easily lock your, your scales. But the biggest issue that pendulum players have with Kashtira is this. Now, I know people are thinking, oh, yeah, Triff, Diablosis, bro. Diablosis, man. It's very rare they're able to end on this plus diablosis and even in that scenario when they do you're still fine because you have to play specific cards that stop that from happening example books but i don't play books i don't even read books why the fuck would i play them instead you play cards like engage and talents because you now get to draw, get value from them, or and or steal with Widow Anchor slash Talents. You can then take their Shangri-La and then literally enter Battle Attack, even slap your own Zeus on top if you want. I want to go through the motion. I'm using this Practice Duel. Master Brick is Master Dummy for us. So I want you guys to understand really how to do this. Pay attention to the whole video, whether you're new to Panda or not. Smash the subscribe button, follow for more, etc. Now, imagine he has a full board. Imagine he has talents. Even if he went Shangri-La and, and, uh, and Diablosis. First off, half the noobs on Master Duel not, don't even know what the fuck pendulum, pendulums are. So they're not even locking your scale in that regard. And even then, you don't need scales. You literally, literally, this is a perfect example of your talents. Force them to use Fenrir, take their Shangri-La, link it away. You're no longer locked. Here's other tricks. So in the standby phase now, he's going to summon out Fenrir. All right. You want to know an easy way to lose? I'll, I'll, I could tell you. Normal blue boy. Almost public magician of prophecy. Search secrets. Oh, trigger Fenrir. Banish blue boy. A car got banished face down. Trigger Shangri-La. Lock your, zone, your pen zone. You can't pen anymore. That's an easy way to lose. That's not how we play here. What we're going to do here is something much smarter than that. I'm going to upstart. We're going to draw it. Remember I told you early, like in multiple videos, the way to play this deck properly is you draw, keep drawing until you get Servant or Abductor. You need those cards, okay? You need those cards. Next, chicken game. Let's keep drawing them. Abductor. I got it. You play 20 draw cards and you play nine of them. The Servant of Dr. Master. So you're going to see it eventually. Next, we're going to scale Mighty Master. Now, this is a very easy way to deal with this. Notice I instantly, before anything, I put two monsters, two scales in my stuff. Now, no matter what happens, can't lock my scale because I literally have two scales in there. So as soon as humanly possible, try and put two scales, two pendulums on your pendulum scale zones. That way, they can't magically be locked because there's already something there. I'm going to keep drawing here. This is a really bad hand. This is a really bad hand for me. Talents, he didn't activate any monster effect. The second I summon Blue Boy, he could even get rid of my Abductor and then lock that scale. It's not good. So in the worst hand ever, what am I going to do? I'm going to fucking pen one. In the worst setup ever, worst hand ever. I'm going to pen one and then I'm going to normal Blue Boy. In different scenarios, I could have Resolve Servant, make Electro, or let him friend rear, then Talents. Okay. But in this scenario with the very weird draw cards that I drew, this is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to summon Blue Boy. He has Ash. At this point, I have an option if I want to negate it. I negate the Blue Boy. So if I negate the Ash with, with Jackal, sure, I get to draw two. But this Fenrir, depending on what he picks, could be quite lethal. So what else is a draw two? It's Talents. So here I'm faced with a choice to draw two or to take. I decide to draw two. I know how many spells are in my deck. All I got to do is resolve my Mighty Master. So if you look at this now, Resolve Mastery. I have enough spell counters on my field. There's no opportunity to use Fenrir. Before he even has an opportunity, what could he use as a spell? There's no card he could have to save him. No one plays Cosmic Cyclone. I Mighty Master everything. Lock something now. Already, already pen summoned. Already used my scales. Lock something now. Now he can't do anything. This card, every time he gets a sort of battle or effect, protects itself. So now we got to find a way to get rid of that. And to, to, the answer to that is our friend, Reflection of Endymion. I'm going to go into Electromite here. 
Uh, because even if this gets hit with a Veiler or something, I can go Celine, Special Reflection from hand. I go this, add, I'm going to get some free pluses here. I'm going to pop this, Sir Jackal. I'm going to do a kind of a big brain play. I can't do too much. My, like this setup is not the best. The main reason again for this video is just to explain to you guys. This is kind of just a background while I explain. It's not really a full-fledged thing, but I would like Jackal to get in the grave. That way I could Celine summon on his turn. I can't summon Mighty Master. I am under. Uh, the setup was kind of weird. Like I didn't have the, uh, the best stuff I need. And I think it showed that he had Nibiru. So I, I'm playing around or I think so. So I use Reflection here. The bounce of Shangri-La. And, and I saw after five summon that he had Nibiru. So I don't want to do too much. So a way to get rid of Shangri-La is Reflection. Kiss me with a Nibiru. I'm cool with that. More than cool with that. That's no problem, bro. Nibiru is not very good in Kashtira because uh, he actually is forced now to put the token in attack position and I could just kill him. So he doesn't really want to do that. So he puts it in defense and what answer does he have to summon it? He can't do shit now. He can't summon a Kashtira. You could kind of put a monster on the board for them. That's great. I, the Jackal goes to grave. That's great. And even in this scenario, he loses. Again, I want to reiterate this duel is kind of just like background noise. While I can explain how to properly win, properly win being should I have cards in your scale beforehand, get cards like talents to steal the Shangri-La, cards like Widow Anchor or engage to steal the Shangri-La. And always, if they have a Nibiru, this is another tip. Make sure, unless you're killing them, keep the Nibiru on board. He just wasted his guy for nothing. That's the stupidest guy I've ever seen in my life. He can't play with his own Nibiru. It's like he nibiru himself, essentially. And he just scoops there. And yeah, the main reason for that video, as I said, or that replay, a little background, just so you can see the Shangri-La. And that board is mainly that first few seconds that you see that Shangri-La with Fenrir. That's typically what they're going to do, give or take, with hand traps. So he had Shangri-La, he had Preparation, he had Fenrir, he had Nibiru, and, and Ash Blossom. So Nibiru, Ash Blossom, whatever. Two, it's expected. So in that scenario, do not lock your zones unless you fucking have to. Do not give them an opportunity to lock your zones unless you're forced to and even if they end up with the diablosis the way to out it is not by playing kaijus and shit play cards that are good that are spells that get value for your counters Tri two tri triple tactics talents play two engage play widow anchor that's five cards and i even play enemy controller at times seven cards in a deck that has 15 draw cards 20 draw cards you're seeing it every single game so you simply just take their shangri-la and link it. If you have Zeus in your extra deck, you enter battle with the Shangri-La or take their, their Diablosis. If it's an attack or whatever, flip it to attack. Attack the defense position Shangri-La. And then you go Zeus, goodbye board, and then you play. This is an example of a bunch of cards that are incredible against Kashtira. This is stuff like talents. If you're simple, like they, they can't do too much. It's not absurd of a deck where the only way you lose is if they lock your scales. So by playing cards like talents that not only give spell counters for servant, not only does it allow you to draw two acting as a pot of greed, not only does it act as a forceful sentry, not only does it act as stealing a monster, but it outs your zone lock. So, and it serves five purposes. Helps you get hand trapped. First or second, it's fantastic. It's not a card like a Kaiju, for example. Don't play a card like a Kaiju. Going first, this shit's dead. Sure, you could pen summon it, but what does that really do as far as advancing your plays and your game state? Not much. Versus that talents, which could be the difference of many games. Two is fine. You don't need too many. And playing cards like Zeus, where now not only talents, but econ, enemy controller, where you could summon anything, take their Shangri-La, and just fucking Zeus on top and clear the rest of the interruptions. They might have their own books. They might have their own imperms. They might have their own defensive cards. So you're able to use card two talents, Two Econ, that's four. Two Engage, that's six. And Widow Anchor, that's seven. Especially if you're playing Endymion, just play this list card for card if you're scared of Kashtira. And take those seven. With those seven, you just, once you steal their card, just fucking slap a Zeus on top. Nice Kashtira deck. The same goes for Pearly. Take their rank two. Take their Zeus. Slap your own Zeus on top. Clear their board. And then you play with four card Pendulum. So that's a very easy way to destroy Kashtira as well as destroy Pearly, especially in an XYZ format with XYZs everywhere. So I do think double talents, double econ engage, and this is very, very, very nice. Uh, Astrograph is is in and out. It's a, Astrograph is an amazing card for pen lovers out there, but the issue with Astrograph is it is win more, but it does open up a lot of plays uh, when you're winning already. And but looking at this deck, yes, it's an expensive deck. If you guys wanna see a budget alternative, let me know in the comments. But this is the best way. Now, one last thing I want to mention is Draco Slayers. Draco Slayers does, does not have a good matchup against Kashtira. Kashtira as well. Let's say even if they open full combo. Let's say you don't even have talents. Let's say you don't have engage. Let's say you don't have Widow Anchor. Sure, you play seven of them. This Endymion deck right here is not seven out of 41. It's seven out of 20. So you're you're seeing one of those because all the other 20 are draw cards. Three ups are three into the voids, three spell books, two blue boy, desires, chicken games, engage, talent. They're all draws. 
because they're all draws and they all somehow get to another draw you can always get the crowley to draw two more you get electrum draws full deck fucking draws you always see one of those seven to take their cards so you're never really locked and one more thing so the issue with draco slayer and this draco slayer needs both scales to play and demian only needs one so even in the scenario where you don't open one of those seven and they lock one of your scales no fucking problem bro scale servant activate three spells who gives a shit but with draco slayers you need both so even if they were to lock one of the scales you're good Remember as well, it's a best of one. That in scenarios, they're not always going to lock the scale. They're going to fucking lock the main monster zone half the time. So remember that. It's not as hard as it is. But if you truly want a meta deck for Pendulum that destroys all decks in the meta, sadly, it's not Draco Slayer. The Draco Slayer was an incredible tier limit meta call because Draco Slayer's Bestial is is so powerful it's just a better dragon link and does more and combos more and otk is better and still plays a shit ton of hand traps and and the banishing your own cards help that version is great in a tier limit format but we're no longer in a format that cares about this deals this doesn't do much anymore unless someone's playing a, a cope tier limit deck draco slayers is not a great meta call sadly they released draco slayers one to two formats too late in master duel that's the video hope you guys enjoy it i said as many tips as i can think of about obliterating kashtira all throughout the video everything in the video is just background while i explain and other stuff i could think of cards like book of eclipse and book of moon i have issues with each of them i will explain now econ talents and engage all advance your game state offensively they literally give you monsters now let's say i'm going second let's say i have book of moon arguing book of moon or econ what's better i know i'm all blue a spell of of prophecy it gets hit with imperm what am i gonna do chain book of moon on his shangri-la oh. I could enemy controller, tribute my blue boy, spell witch's prophecy, search secrets, take Shangri-La, make Zeus, blow your shit up, play with six cards, five cards. Book of Moon is not that high impact. Econ is insanely high impact. You're going to notice the defensive cards I choose to play are steel cards because now I could play with that. If I steal a dark from my opponent, let's say my opponent has a dark monster. This could be any purely, purely anything. Let's whatever. I steal a dark monster. I then go into my own dark. I use dark to summon their dark. I then make Selene. I then summon Mighty Master. And then I summon Axis Code with Selene. Single-handedly, stealing their one monster changes the game with Engage, Talents, Enemy Controller. It gives me the monster I want. I can take their Baron to floor. I can take their card and use the effect with Talents and Econ. I could take their level 7 and, and XYZ. This is very important to, 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 to recognize. To take their card and use it. Make their Zeus. That is something that... Uh, Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse lacks, lack big time. They're not very, like, they don't actually promote your board. You could Book of Moon your own blue boy that still resolves, but then it's face down. Doesn't really help you much. Whereas Econ, you take their card. So going second, this is insanely high impact. And it makes cards like Selyek, Imperm, even Fenrir just don't do shit. Like, if they decide to Fenrir a blue boy, you just, sure, Econ, I'll take I'll, I'll take it thanks uh another card that's decent in this deck is kashtira fenrir i do think that once a once a rise heart comes out i think every single deck will need to play uh two of this and three right sauce to play five fenrir when, when a rise heart comes out because then you could just slap your own fenrir down slap your own a rise heart on top of the fenrir because they use shangri laws effect and then slap your own zeus later and then play but that's down the road when it comes out for now use this hope you enjoyed the video see you guys in the next video make sure to smash the subscribe button smash the like button check out trip for more videos i want you to know in the comments if you guys want to see more master videos see you guys in the next video